welcome everyone to the second season of Face Turn with Candace Cordelia, PWI Presents. And I'm your host, Candace Cordelia. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you all for your support for our first season of shows. We've had some amazing guests in the past, but this time around, we are kicking things all the way off in 2022 with someone who quite honestly doesn't need a grandiose introduction. You know her as the NWA World Woman's Champion. I am so excited to present to you today the one and only Camille. Camille, how are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing so well. Thank you for joining us here today. Um, Behind me, it's sunny. I don't know how it is on your end, Uh, but thank you. This is an honor. Yes, I'm excited to be here and see what, what you got for me. Well, here we go. (laughs) Here we go. I hope I don't surprise you too much, but I'm going to start things off very, very simply. My first question for you today is how did you get your start in wrestling? How I got my start in wrestling is, well, I went to college. I got a degree. I did the, you know, normal thing. And, um, once I kind of got into an office job, I was like, wow, this really sucks. And it's not for me. I I can't picture myself doing this the rest of my life. And so for Christmas break, I went back home for a little bit and my dad and I we went to an independent show in like the boondocks in the middle of nowhere. And it was such a bad show. It, the wrestling was terrible, but I had a great time and I was just laughing and, and kicking it with my dad. And I, I grew up watching wrestling with my dad. So it was like a bonding thing for us anyway. And um, I kind of just woke up the next day and I had an epiphany and I was like, you know, I, I've played sports my whole life. I used to act when I was younger. I was like, that's, you know, a combination of the two I, I was made to do this. So let's, let's do it. And then I just Googled how to become a professional wrestler and found a school. And that was that. Wow. Wow. And I love that you mentioned that you have a background in acting. That's something that I personally didn't know about, but certainly it's helped you within the world of pro wrestling because you need to have not just the athleticism, but that performative uh, state about you. So talk to us more about growing up, watching wrestling. I mean, who were your favorite wrestlers? My favorite wrestlers growing up it was Edge and Lita. I loved Edge and Lita. And I, I liked Edge just because not, he, not only was he great in the ring, but he was like a funny guy and he made me laugh. And of course I was little and I thought he was cute. You, you know, so that that was that. And then Lita, just because she, you know, she had her thong strings hanging out, and she was so spicy and doing the backflips. And I just, I loved watching them. Now that I'm older, it's changed a little bit, but those are my favorites growing up. And uh, yeah, I just watched it with my dad mostly because he grew up a big wrestling fan. And so it was just something that you know, whenever it came on TV, I was sitting right beside him on the couch and watching wrestling during during the Attitude Era. That's when I was growing up to the Attitude Era. Yes, yes. I love it. I love it. A lot of people came into wrestling through the Attitude Era for sure. It makes complete sense. But we can't downplay your other sports achievements that you've had growing up. I mean, you were involved in softball. You were also part of the LFL. Talk to me about that experience, because I would assume that it really helped to carve a path for you in sports and wrestling, but also to really build your character and to build your body, to be quite honest. Yeah, so... I grew up always, it was nothing that was like forced on to me, but it was just like my, I have an older brother and I always wanted to be friends with him and play with him and he played sports. So I followed suit and my dad would do little things like throw balloons at us for hand eye coordination and, and hang up dollar bills on the rafters and, you know, in the house. So we would practice our ups so we could try to you know get the dollar bill. And so athleticism was something that kind of, I just grew up around. It was very normal to me. And I played all sorts of sports growing up. And then, yeah, I went to, I played division one college softball and that taught me, you know, how to hone in on a skill and how to really put in the hard work for it and go through a lot of challenges and go through a lot of mishaps and failures and learn how to adapt to failing a lot (laughs) because, you know, division one college softball is a whole different animal than high school ball, for instance, and then playing in the LFL like picking up football, I made the team because I was athletic and the coach saw something in me, but I knew nothing about football other than just watching it on TV, but how brutal it was, the training for it, just being able to pick up a new skill that helped transfer into wrestling because wrestling whole different animal. And even though you are an athlete, I mean, you can, I'm sure all the athletes have gotten into it can attest that 
you might think just because you're athletic, you're going to pick it up like that. That's not the case. I mean, you might pick it up a little faster than other people who haven't grown up playing sports, but just even the movement in the ring and, and getting your feet, you know, underneath you, stuff like that is just something that you have to practice, practice, practice. Mm. So once you made your way to the ring and you started your journey in wrestling, were there certain things that you thought, wow, I did not expect this. This is a bit harder, you know, versus playing in the LFL and also doing softball in terms of coordination, skill set, et cetera. Honestly, the biggest shock for me about wrestling was not so much the performative stuff and the athleticism in the ring. It was more of the stuff that goes into the business of wrestling and the outside stuff of wrestling, like the politics, Mm -hmm. the kind of cattiness behind the scenes things was very weird to me, very different for me because playing sports, you're part of a team. And, you know, although there is competitive stuff because everyone wants this position, you're still a a part of the team and you all want to win. Whereas in wrestling, it's a bit individual and everyone's kind of out for themselves. And, and I just, I, I went into, into wrestling, looking at, looking at it still as a team type of thing, because you're in there with somebody else and you have to work together. And I found out quick that not everyone (laughs) has that way of thinking. And so just kind of getting used to that and figuring out how to navigate it and still keep my morals and my standards about myself. Mm. So how did you find yourself navigating that, if you don't mind elaborating more on the backstage politics? Because that's something that, in my personal experience and also observation, it's easy to see things from the outside, especially if you're a fan, and to kind of, you know, come to your own conclusion about things. But as a performer, as a wrestler, and, and as a business person, how do you find yourself navigating that world with the backstage? Yeah, so I actually, I got out of wrestling for a little bit. Uh, just because because of stuff like that. And I was like, ah, I don't want this to to change myself. I didn't want to kind of stoop down, if you will, to other people's levels and try and like kind of the backstabbing and that stuff. I just was like, I don't really want to be a part of this anymore. But then, of course, I missed it so much because wrestling is almost like a gang. Like you can't leave it until you die. Like all the people that retire never actually retire. You know what I'm saying? You always you're always part of it once you're in it. And so I missed it. And I was like, you know what? I'll just go in and just stay to myself. I, that's what I kind of do. You know, I, I, I feel like I get along with everyone for the most part and I just stick to myself. And some people might think like, well, she's not friends with anybody, but I don't, I don't need to be, you know, I don't need to be best friends with everybody, uh, but I also don't have any enemies. I just stay to myself, do my thing and keep focused. And that's really how I've, how I've navigated it. Mm, And that stoicism has definitely helped you. And we'll get more into that later in terms of NWA. But also speaking of NWA, we have to go into how you exactly came to the promotion. How did that start? How were you scouted for them? So it was actually during that time period that I was out of wrestling and uh, David Lagana, who was the co-president at the time, he always keeps an eye out for new talent And he always, he said that he kind of saw me on the indie scene and stuff like that and had an idea in his head, but never had the right time to use it. So fast forward to when I was out of wrestling, he contacted me and he was just basically like, so are you really done wrestling? And I was like, well, I don't know what, you you know, what do you got for me? Just throw it out there. And so he described this role of coming in as Nick Aldis's bodyguard just for NWA 70, just for the anniversary show. So I could kind of have a thing with Brandy and stop her from interrupting the match, blah, blah, blah. And that's all it was supposed to be was possibly just a one-off. And then when we came out with Nick and the match happened and the reaction that we got, the chemistry was just there and we knew that we kind of had something. And so organically it just evolved from there. And I've been with the company ever since. Mm. And that certainly kickstarted things off for you because what a lot of your fans have noted is not just aside from the stoicism, there's a presence about you. And it was certainly seen when you became a part of that faction and you were Nick Aldis's bodyguard. And, and a lot of people really locked eyes on you and saw something special in you. So as time went on and, and the company has been progressing, uh, please explain the journey for you as a wrestler, how you fit into the company, the things that you were doing to really elevate yourself to the position that you're in right now. Mm-hmm. So when I came in as the bodyguard, that was just the plan. I was just possibly going to be the bodyguard for the foreseeable future. And that's really all we had planned. And uh, one time I remember Billy, he does his music and, and uh, what's the word for it records sometimes in Nashville. So he came over to uh, the house that we 
we all kind of stayed at and met at for NWA. And he said, hey, we really want to invest in you as a wrestler. But he knew that I hadn't wrestled in a while, that I hadn't had any ring time. I wasn't practicing in the ring, anything like that. And so um, he wanted to make sure he kind of set in my contract like a dedicated amount of time to spend in the ring, practicing, getting ready to become not only the bodyguard, but also a wrestler for NWA. And then I remember <laughs> I, me and my fiance, who's just my boyfriend at the time, we were in the UK visiting his family. And while we were over there, and of course the thing is we were eating everything. Like I was having chocolate and eating all the meals with all the desserts, just going crazy, having fun. And I get a text that I'm going to have my first match like two weeks later at our next set of tapings. And of course I was like, what? Because normally I could, you know, if I was feeling a little fluffy, I could cover up with some clothes and stuff like that. But yeah, and I had my first match with Maddie Max. Mm. And um, we also recorded a, a, a kind of like a montage type of thing with me doing the recording over it. And that was my first time people hearing me talk. So because I hadn't talked for two years as, as Camille. And yeah, that's just kind of how it progressed and changed. And I know so many people were disappointed in my accent. So <laughs> sorry. So sorry. Everyone was like, I thought she was British or I thought she was this and that. She's country. Like, oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's all good. I could totally foresee that. I could see someone thinking you would be Russian or because it, yeah. it's, you know, yeah. the authority, I guess, and in, in, yeah. in a very typical way. But either way, you, you've certainly clawed your way in NWA to become uh, the champ right now, the NWA World Women's Champion. What was it like having your first set of matches in NWA and and really proving yourself along the way uh, with all of the different contenders that you've you've quite honestly had? I'm not going to lie. I mean, it was nerve wracking because I don't think that people realized how little wrestling experience that I had and uh especially just because my presence like you said my stature they expected that I've been doing it for a long time or that you know what I'm saying and I got in there and I was just doing my best learning along the way you know kind of thrown into the fire and it, I remember it was our first tapings back from kind of our COVID hiatus for a year and it was me and Thunder Rosa and we got our match time and it was 15 minutes. And for some people that were like, okay, whatever, that's not much. But for someone that has had only a few matches, you know, I see 15 minutes. I'm like, oh man, how am I going to do this? You know? And the thing is when you get thrown into the fire, well, or the pool for this instance, either you sink or you swim. And I've just been swimming ever since. I've just been proving people wrong and proving myself. And I think, I do think that now people realize that, you know, I'm, I'm a very good wrestler. I'm a very good character. And I've just been having to prove myself the, the entire time. Mm -hmm. And certainly in that short amount of time, I believe it's it's less than five years. We're in 2022 now and we have a long way to go. But you have absolutely 100% proven yourself. And you're currently holding a title that the best of the best have mm -hmm. held as well. I mean, we're talking about Jazz, Mildred Burke, Serena Deeb, et cetera. Well, what does that feel like for you to have this title, the NWA World Women's Championship title, and, and carry on that prestigious legacy? Yeah, it feels crazy, especially for this early in my career to be carrying something. You Mildred Burke, like you said, Jazz, who I don't think gets enough credit. Uh, it's it's insane that me, especially as a, you know, well, I just turned 29, 29 year old, I'm holding this title and I'm having to really prove what it's worth and not only just for me but for the company the nwa as a whole to be able to brand it to be able to show it to new eyes it's a lot of pressure but i do think that i thrive under pressure mm -hmm. certainly and we've seen that recently in your matches uh, especially last year against serena d for example i mean you defeated her and became the champion in that respect what was that specific match like for you because serena deeb is is She's incredible, as you are as well, but she's not an easy competitor to be in the ring with. So what was that like? Oh, I was so excited to work with Serena just because I know, number one, she's a true professional and she's a, she's a sweetheart. I mean, I know that that's kind of ruining your character right now, but she is. She's a great person. You know, she's a great human being. And, and to be able to get in there with someone that 
is not only a great human being, but so good at their craft. And we, when you're someone new like me and you get to get in there with someone like her, it helps elevate you. It helps you learn new things. And um, I was very, very grateful, not only to be able to work her, but that be the match that I won the title in. It was a really special moment. Absolutely. And I do want to bring up, because this is a personal thing for me, I'm also, I believe we share the same height. You're billed at 5'10", and I'm also a tall woman myself. Oh, nice yeah, yes. tall girl. <laughs> yes, yes, virtual high five. Absolutely. And I don't have a wrestling background, but I would love to know in terms of your height, have you found that to be an advantage or a disadvantage in some respects in your wrestling career versus the sports that you've performed in the past with softball and football as well? No, I definitely think it's an advantage. I love being tall. I've never been one of the people that were like, oh, I wish I was a little shorter and more girly. Like, no, I like being tall. I like being built. I think especially for uh, my character and like you said, just my presence alone, it really adds to it. And when you're having matches, like I love having matches with small girls because it's such a fun story to tell. Like, how are they going to overcome this monster? You know, and um, I'm calling myself a monster, but you get you get what I'm saying. <laughs> how you know the visual of it is so interesting. And then on this, at the same regard, if there's someone that is you know, my height, that's interesting for people to watch too, because it's not like you walk around every day seeing girls that size kind of go at it. So the dynamic there, there's a lot that you can play with when you're this tall. Mm, certainly. What has been some of your most memorable matches today? I mean, we talked about you versus Serena Deeb, but what else, especially from 2021, uh, do you really look back on today and think, wow, that was a banger match and I would love to have a rematch with that person if possible? I have two that come to mind. One of them, actually, a lot of people probably didn't even see because uh, NWA was on Fight Network, so it was behind a paywall. And it was not on the pay-per-view. It was on just a fi- uh, just an NWA Power episode. And that was me and Thunder Rosa. And it was a 20-minute um, time draw match. And that one just stuck out for me because, like I said, t- for me to go 20 minutes, for most people are, you know, thinking, my, oh, that's not a lot. That's not a lot. But for me, that was a really big accomplishment and being, being able to show my skills for that long and, and keep up my wind and do everything like that. That was a special moment for me. But my favorite match today definitely is me and Layla Hirsch at uh, Empower because the crowd, they were electric and it was just so much fun. I think that was the first time in my wrestling career thus far where I was really feeling it. Like I was in the moment. I wasn't overthinking. I was just in the moment doing me. And I think that everyone had a great time watching it as well. So that was a very special match for me. Oh, we did. We did. Because (laughs) I I remember personally watching that and thinking something clicked. Like I saw it within both of you and and Mm -hmm. the chemistry was out of this world. And and we talked about stature and height and Layla is not the same height as you. She's Mm -hmm. slightly shorter, but just seeing how you both worked with each other and trusted each other as well. You could absolutely see that. And and that was one of the best matches I've seen of you with anyone in the ring. So I I can find that pick certainly (laughs) what's next on the cards for you in NWA, because we're seeing changes in the company, you know, things look electric in terms of the roster that NWA has. And it seems like the future is exceedingly bright for 2022. So what's in the cards for you? What would you like to see? Who would you like to go up against? You know, what's on your bucket list? Yeah. So this year, what I'm hoping for, not just personally, but as a company, I hope that we get to travel a bit more and show our stuff to people all over the country. Cause I know that was actually the plan pre COVID is that we were going to start traveling, but then COVID happened and that got shut down. And so now kind of re regaining that momentum that we got pre COVID. And I think that we're doing a good job of that showing our stuff to people all around the world. And now that we are back on YouTube, that's also going to help because we have it. What happens is NWA power it, it, um, shows for the first time on Tuesdays on fight. And then they put it up on YouTube for Friday for everyone to see. So I think that's great because, you know, if you want to get to all access for $50, you get all the pay-per-views for the year and you get to watch NWA power first before anyone else. And then the people that they don't feel like doing that for some reason, you know, whatever, I'm not going to judge it too hard. You get to watch it on YouTube still. So that helps to grow our brand just because, Anyone clicking around watching wrestling, it can pop up. And someone that has never seen it before, doesn't know anything about it, they can watch it. So I'm super excited about growing 
And as far as people getting in the ring with, um, she just had her debut at NWA Power last night. And that's Maddie Rinkowski. And I hope I didn't butcher her last name. But I'd love to get in there and mix it up with her because I think that she has a very bright future. Mm, she's spunky. I've, I've interviewed Maddie and she's yeah. very intelligent from what I can see. And she's hungry uh, to yes. really do the best that she can in the ring. So that would be very intriguing to see you two, you know, spar in the ring. I, I'm down yeah. for that, certainly. <laughs> I also want to get into YouTube for one, because I know you have a YouTube channel and I've been watching. So I want to talk about that. But my next question for you also NWA related is about the relationship that you have with Billy Corgan. What's it like having him as a boss and having him spearhead NWA into the future? And if you can talk about that experience. Yeah. So I actually think, and this would probably give me a little heat with him, but he already knows it. I think he already knows it. I am grateful that I wasn't a huge Smashing Pumpkins fan or anything like that. So I wasn't starstruck by him. I knew that I knew he was a big deal. I knew that he was like the number one rock star in the 90s and stuff like that. But uh, I just look at him as my boss and my superior, but also as a friend because he's super humble, so down to earth, very easy to talk to and um, just, you know, throw ideas at and but go back and forth. And so I'm very grateful that my boss is a rock star with a level head, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love smashing pumpkins, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hate on you for that. <laughs> Come here. Many, he, he has a cult following. Like he has a cult following. That is, that is one thing I found out. I will like, he'll be on the TV screens backstage and people will just sit there and watch with their eyes peeled. I mean, just so <laughs> starstruck by him. <laughs> Were you at all surprised about his interest in wrestling at all? Definitely, uh, especially someone that they've gotten to that level of success. It's almost a time thing. Like, how do you even have time to to know about the history of wrestling and <laughs> and all this stuff? It's just something that is very surprising coming from him. But oh, he loves it. He knows the history behind it. You know, he's not someone to, that just one day woke up and said, "Oh, I want to get into wrestling." He really knows his stuff. Hmm. But that has to be amazing that you have the support of someone who not only loves wrestling but understands the business part of it and really wants yeah. to see the company succeed and to see all of you succeed. So that has to be, you know, the cherry on the top of everything that you're experiencing in NWA for sure. Uh, but I want to get into YouTube because you have a YouTube channel and I've watched some videos. It's really fun. It shows a different side of you in terms of the different tutorials that you have, makeup, <laughs> and workouts, you know, and it seems like everyone's getting into YouTube now more than ever, uh, having been quarantined, especially and trying to find different things to do. So what's it like maintaining a YouTube channel and really showing this different side of yourself for your fans? Well, I'm actually probably terrible to ask because I have not maintained it very well. I did. Oh, I was. That's what happened. It was COVID hit. We weren't doing much and I got bored. And so I was started making YouTube videos and that was a fun outlet for me to create. I couldn't wrestle. So I started creating a different way. And um, it, it, it actually started doing really well, gaining some traction. I even got monetized and everything. But I think I went so long without making a video on there that I don't have a monetization anymore because <laughs> it. I went so long without making a video because wrestling picked back up and life picked back up. I also do real estate. So mm -hmm. I just stopped doing videos. I, I reposted something on there the other day, the video that some made for me, but I did realize I'm actually trying to get back into bodybuilding a little bit more. And um, so I might start doing some more workout stuff and putting it on there. I love that you segued into bodybuilding because that's also something that I really want to touch base on because you've won competitions in the past and you're really dedicated uh, to bodybuilding and really making sure that you're in shape and you're fit. What is that like for you? I mean, you're already in wrestling and you have to maintain a certain physique. Uh, that's not to say that everyone is really dedicated to that, but you, especially you're, you're, you know, I'm not trying to place heat on anyone, but it's, it's, it's definitely something that I see you are really, really uh, dedicated and committed to. So talk to us about what it's like maintaining that physique, not just as a wrestler, but as a bodybuilder. I'm not going to lie. It is very hard. I am Southern. I love food. I love to eat. I got a big appetite. Like I'm not someone that's like, oh, like, I love eating. I love food. And so the thing about you can be healthy and you can be strong and, not look aesthetically pleasing, let's just say, mm -hmm. you know, 
Yes. But have like the aesthetics that look nice on camera and stuff like that. You have to dye it very hard. So everyone can work out, but you have to dye it a certain way. That's the biggest part of it. And um, just learning because because like I said, I've always played sports and stuff and I was strong and I was able and I was functional, but I didn't care about my diet. So my look was a little bit different. Whereas now I'm learning how to diet to look a certain way. And that was a very hard transition for me. And I still struggle with it. I love sweets. You know, I, <laughs> it's something that I, I struggle with all the time. But I also just have to realize like this is my job and my character. Not just because if I was just walking around in what I like to call regular life every day and I was, even, you know, I wasn't jacked. I wouldn't care, to be honest with you. I, I'd be fine. But I have a character to maintain and I have to look a certain way. And that's the way I think about it. I look at it as my job. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't kind of slack on my job, if you will. Right. And one thing that you mentioned, which I think is very important, we're talking about body image because this is what it's leading into. And you stated that you don't have to look a specific way. You don't have to be considerably all the way cut in terms of your physique to become a wrestler. How important was that to you to realize as time went on? Because especially we're talking about body image, that's still a huge topic in today's world. But for an athlete, you know, that's even more pressing to come to terms with. And what has your experience been like with that as an athlete and, and as a woman too? Yeah, so I just think that, Number one, you have to be happy with yourself. You can't care what other people think about I me. Mean, when I first got into this, I got called manly all the time. And I was like, what? I'm a, like, I am girly and a female. I just have my, you know, I, and growing up playing sports, I had never heard that because everyone respected and appreciated muscles and being strong and, you know, being an athlete. And I got into wrestling and I would hear some of those comments. And initially it hurt my feelings. Cause I was like, where's this coming from? And, but you do, you learn just to get thick skin and who cares, <laughs> but uh, that's hard for people that are just going to be getting in, especially women that struggle with body image issues, you know, especially with social media, stuff like that. Everyone's always showing their best self. And so you compare yourself to other people's best photos or, and it might be filtered. It might be Photoshopped. You never know. So just being happy with yourself in the mirror is the most important thing. I will say this might be a little controversial, but as far as like the body positivity movement and stuff like that, I don't think that you should accept yourself if you're, if you're in an unhealthy state. I think everyone's goal should be to be healthy, but healthy looks does look different for different people. So just because you have a six pack does not mean you're not healthy. and doesn't mean you can't go. There's plenty of people that they might, they might got some thickness on them. Okay. But they can go and they got wind and, you know, everyone has a different look and everyone has a different set point for what's healthy for them. And I think you just have to be happy with it. Whatever you're happy with, stick to it. Hmm. What is one thing that you feel people would be surprised to know about you? <laughs> I used to be able to sing. Oh. I can't what? sing anymore. I can't sing anymore though, but I, but when, when I used to act it, so I did like, uh, I did plays and musicals and like the Broadway type of stuff. And so everyone doing that has to sing. So I used to take voice lessons and all of that stuff. And I used to sing. Yeah. I used to do like my warm ups, mama, maybe match my M&Ms, you know, all that good stuff. Yeah. So I used to sing and I still sing in the car, but only I hear myself sing nowadays. <laughs> what do you think happened? Was it just one day you woke up and, and your vocal cords were like, nah, we're, we're yeah, <laughs> I got older. My voice changed yeah, <laughs> anymore. It went away and I, I don't do my vocal exercises anymore. So it just is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But you're killing it in the ring right now. So the trade-off, I think. Right. I'll take it. Good. I'll take it. <laughs> is acting something that you could see yourself doing more of in the future outside of wrestling, like say on television, film, web series, theater, et cetera. So I do think that I would get pigeonholed in a certain uh, role and because of my looks, but I'd be okay with that. For instance, if I got to do like a Marvel character or, you know, like some badass woman just like shooting guns off or something, I would love that. I think it'd be a great time. So yeah, down the road, if, uh, if that fit in the schedule and I could do that, I would, I would love to do that. Mm -hmm. And I could see that. I mean, the height itself you know, in acting, they pigeonhole. It, it is what it is. 
but you can make a career out of that. You totally. I would guess I'm saying I'd be fine with that. <laughs> right, right. And we would love to see it. I mean, especially with Marvel, that would be fantastic. Yeah. So we're going to throw that into the universe for 2022 and beyond. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what do your friends and family think about your career and the success that you've had in wrestling so far? Oh, they think it's so cool. I, I'm lucky to have a lot of support. Like my dad is my biggest fan. I don't even have a Twitter, but I know he goes on Twitter and like tries to promote for me, like retweet, like, like retweets things for me and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and my mom, I'm sure she worries a little bit, but she has a good time with it as well. And she, she always tries to give me ideas for promos and stuff. And I'm like, stop, just mom, let me do my thing, please. <laughs> uh but yeah and my friends the funny thing about it is like people from high school and stuff this is even when I was doing independence back in the day like in front of 30 people making 20 bucks they thought it was so cool and like I was traveling the world and so they definitely see what I'm doing through a little bit of a different lens because I'm here doing it so I'm like oh it's my job you know I love it but it's my job but they look at it as like oh you're always in the, here and there and doing this that's so cool so it's, it's funny the perspectives people have on it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and did you envision yourself having this, this place that you're at right now in wrestling, being the NWA World Women's Champion, you know, getting to wrestle with some of the best of the best? I mean, is this what you saw for yourself when you first got started in the industry? Hey, when I first got started, let me tell you, I thought it was WWE or bust because that's how it is for a lot of people getting into it. And that's a lot of people's dreams, especially that's what you grow up watching. And uh, I just thought that's if you didn't go to WWE, what's the point of doing it? You know, you, you can't make a living doing it if you don't go to WWE. So now that I am with this amazing company. And I'm having such a good time and I have so much freedom. And I think that's the key word is I have freedom. Um, and that's how I make my living. Um, it's amazing. I, I, I did not see myself doing that with any other company, you know what I'm saying? And so the fact that I'm somewhere where I never pictured myself, I never thought I would be, and I'm doing it and I'm making a living and I'm having a good time, which a lot of people with bigger companies cannot say for themselves. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and we see the business has changed so much with, within the last year and it's still changing. It seems on a daily basis. Is there anything that you particularly would like to see evolve in wrestling itself? <laughs> the fans. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see people be a little bit more uh, respectful. Um, in that's just as far as because my thing is back in the day, there were superstars. And I think they were superstars because people didn't have Instagram. People did not have Twitter. So people did not have access to these people all the time. So when you had to buy a ticket and go to a show to go see them, it was a big moment. It was a big deal. Or even seeing them on TV. And now there's so much access to people, which is a blessing and a curse. It really is. But it kind of takes away from the star power of people, I think, because it makes them it's good to be relatable in some senses, but in other senses, it takes away that star power and people almost feel like you, you know, as the wrestler, owe them your time and you owe them this and that. And I think that there just needs to be a nice kind of line there where people appreciate what you do and don't just expect something from you. Mm. So if the internet were to just be completely obliterated tomorrow, it sounds like you wouldn't have you, you would be cool with it. You wouldn't have the problem. I'm like, it's, I already got rid of my Twitter and if people would think that that's just because of wrestling and stuff like that, like, no, I got on Twitter and everything on there it just with the world was just negative, negative, negative. And I was like, Oh, I don't want this in my headspace anymore. So delete. Uh, Instagram is just kind of pictures and fun stuff. So it's not a big deal, but I say in a perfect world, if I didn't have to, I wouldn't have any of it because I could be reading a book, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, could, I could be doing something to better myself. Exactly. And, and you said a lot there and, and a lot of people feel that way. A lot of people are looking for authenticity and looking for realness and, and to see it on something synthetic, like, you know, virtual media and, and the internet, it, it can be hard. It really can mess with people's minds, but I feel like 
and this is just my opinion, I feel like people are coming back to a stasis of trying to figure out who they are that's mm-hmm. aside from social media, which is really lovely and it's really nice because like you said, there's a lot of negativity, you know, on social media that we see on a daily basis. So thank you for being candid about that. Yeah. And yeah, for sure. And is there anything else that you have on your to-do list for this year that's outside of wrestling? Something that you want to tackle? You talked about reading uh, just now, but is there anything else that you like to do on your off time? So after we get off this call, I'm actually going in. We just moved. So I'm actually going into a new brokerage. So that's a real estate stuff and getting with a new brokerage. And I really want to, because what happened was COVID happened and we weren't doing anything. So I just dove into, I put my, my hands in all the cookie jars. I was trying everything out. And so I got into real estate as well. And once wrestling picked back up, I didn't do much real estate. I did like a couple transactions here and there, but I'm realizing I'm like during the week, other than having to go to the gym and get in the ring for a few hours, I still have time to do stuff. So why not try to make a little extra money to, you know, you know, and have something in my back pocket? Because I do think some people say it's not good to have a plan B because you need to focus on plan A. But I think it's great to have a plan B and have a, a, a something in your back pocket. So I really want to dive a little bit more into real estate this year. Mm-hmm. What is it about real estate that you really love the most? The, the freedom, once again, the, the, you, you're an independent contractor still, still, and you're making your own schedule and you're going to do as well as the time and effort that you put in. Mm-hmm. So I like that you're in control of that and you're not kind of under someone's thumb. Mm, I love that. And it's not an easy a uh, career path as well, even no. with freedom, from what I understand, it's, you still yeah. have to really get that commission and, and you're talking with people all the time, but that's fantastic. And, you know, I, I personally love I'm going to throw some pop culture out there. I love selling sunset. I don't know if you've ever. Yeah, that. I like that. That's good. <laughs> so, but from what I can see, they do more of outside. <laughs> There's more outside drama <laughs> versus, yes. you know, the selling of the homes, but they're, the homes are just gorgeous and everything's beautiful. I, I personally, that's one of my favorite shows. So <laughs> yeah, they definitely dramatize it a little bit. And it's only like that much about real estate, but it does get people to get into the real estate bug, bug when they see those commission checks. You're like, what? <laughs> That's how I felt. I saw that and I was like, wow, you made that on one house. Hmm. Am I in the right industry? <laughs> What's going on? So yes, but we talked about 2022 a little bit more, but is there anything within uh, the wrestling industry that you yourself really, really want to achieve this year? I mean, we're just in the start of it and it can only go up from here. And there's so much more that I'm sure you'd like to get into, but just for your sake, you know, being the champion right now, what else would you like to do uh, within NWA? Besides you said travel was one of those things. Yeah. I'd like to remain champion for all of 2022, kick everyone's asses. That's number one. And on just a personal note inside of my head where, so we moved here actually because my fiance is uh, going to be a coach at a wrestling school that's starting here. And so I am so excited to finally have a ring to where I haven't had a ring to work in since pre COVID. So what, almost two years, I just show up and do what I can. So now that I'll finally have a ring to work in, I'm so excited to get some reps in there and then just be able to get more confidence. I've already, you know, have a lot of confidence with my abilities and what I can do, but just to even take it up a notch, that's what I want to take into 2022. Just really have that confidence inside my head to know that, Hey, like you're the shit, you got this. Yes. And you noted earlier in terms of just, and you, you said a key word confidence, and that's something that a lot of people either you build on it. Some people have it naturally, you know, it's, it's something that I believe you really need to have when you're in this business, especially to get to the point where you are. And sometimes it's hard to maintain that. So what do you particularly do in order to stay in the zone, stay focused and really keep that air of confidence about you? So I'll do, I mean, this might sound vain, but I don't care for a match or before like a taping weekend, I'll go back and I'll watch one of my favorite matches and I'll, you know what I'm saying? I'll watch stuff that made, that make me proud of myself. And just so I know, like, because everyone messes up, everyone has some stinkers out there. Everyone has a big bad match. That's not what you should focus on. You should focus on everything that you've done well, because if you get in that headspace, that's what you're going to be thinking. And that's what you're going to do. It's kind of like, that speaking it into existence type of thing. And so it's not a cocky, uh, unrealistic, uh, not self-awareness. You still need to be self-aware, but you also have to be aware of 
I can make mistakes, but I can also do this. And this is what I should be focused on so I can perform to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. What's one piece of advice that you would give to anyone uh, who, I mean, I don't want to say would like to be in your shoes, but who would just like to carve out a career in pro wrestling? I mean, everyone has their vision of what their career should be or what they would like for it to be. But for anyone, especially, you know, a young uh, up and comer in the field, what would you tell them in order to really uh, maintain or keep that confidence and, and focus and do the best that they can? I would tell them to get in shape, work on their look, work on their image, because unfortunately that is the first thing people see is your outer shell and you need to look, you need to look a great way. And then the next thing would be your character development. Make sure you have something that makes you stand out from everybody else. And then just don't expect things to be handed to you. Uh, You need to work hard because I, I have realized that a lot of, and like I said, I'm young in the business. So I hate saying this, like I've, like I'm some grizzled vet, but a lot of people are coming in now, especially with all of the promotions that are available and they just think they're going to start and six months later, they're going to have a contract or they should have a contract or they should have this. They should have that. I'm not saying kiss ass and pay your due. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying know that you are going to have to work hard and to expect some downs. Cause it's not just going to be all fun and games. There are going to be some bad times and just, to really stay grounded in those moments where the highs and the lows stay grounded, keep a nice balance and you'll do great. Mm, that's lovely. And you're riding high right now as the NWA world women's champion. I believe your reign is closing in on 300 days. It could be more. I have to go back and check, but it's, it's been a quite some time. It's been a wonderful journey from what we've all seen here at Pro Wrestling Illustrated. And I just want to say thank you so much, Camille, for taking time out to speak with me and speak to the PWI universe. It's a pleasure meeting you, wishing you all of success in 2022. And do you have any last parting thoughts before we head out? Well, thank you for your time and for a a fun interview and getting to know you a little bit more. And if you guys want to follow me, I just have an Instagram. You can follow me at Camille Brickhouse, but more importantly, make sure you follow the NWA on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Fight TV. Go get the all inclusive package so you can, for $50, you can get all of our programming and all of the pay per views for $50. So go check that out. Absolutely. And $50, you cannot beat that. NWA is going to greater heights this year, as is Camille. And we are here to see all of the fun things in store with Camille and that promotion. Thank you all for watching this very special first episode of the second season of Face Turn with Candice Cordelia. Check out all of our videos on our YouTube channel for PWI. You can also check it out on my social media accounts at Candice Cordelia, and that is on Twitter. And you can also find me on Instagram, thatgirlcandice16. Thank you again, Camille, for such a beautiful time spent with you. I hope you have a fantastic day. Congrats on your move as well. Everything that's happening in your life. And we can't wait to see what's next in store. And thank you all for watching. And until next time, this is your host, Candice Cordelia, signing off.